official.streetsmarks at gmail.com is how you want to contact us. Listen to us right here exclusively on YouTube, Street Smart Audio. A fuck with us. Official.streetsmarks on IG. Official.streetsmarks on SoundCloud. Street Smart fan page on Facebook. Street underscore smarks on Twitter. This is the Extreme Retro Review for ECW. February 1st, 1994. This is the go home show for the night the line was crossed. As a go home show, H Dub, your thoughts? My thoughts um, was this show was terrible. <clears throat> um, yeah, there was, uh, there was a match that inexplicably just came to an end for some reason. You have no idea what the result was, why it came to an end. It just was over and was on to the next one. It was never mentioned again, and that really bothered me. And um, so, yeah, this show was terrible. So we have the cold open, Paul Diamond getting fucked up from last week, and the chic substitution. We got a quick chic package. It's set to the Jaws theme. Did you get that on the network? Ah, damn, it sucks. I see him beating up Onita, so it's footage from uh, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, also known as FMW. And we go into the theme. He's up in the nest. It's more February 5th shilling. Tanaka and Sheik versus the tag champs. And we got a lead in to the tag title match. Sullivan and Taz versus Keith Shearer? Oh. Which one? Kyle Shearer? I don't know what Shearer it is. Oh, I don't know either. I just, just thought it was one of the Shearers. Um, but K Shearer. And Mikey Whipwright. Complete squidash as Mikey gets thrown around. Taz suplexes. Sullivan power bombs uh, a guy. Taz sets up the trio well. <laughs> Taz with a top rope overhead belly to belly for the dub. One star. Sullivan shakes on the ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he immediately busts a night. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Taz right behind him. <laughs> Woman comes in with the blindfold. Taz comes in, starts mimicking, covering his eyes, falls on the ground, face busting in that. <laughs> Woman over there. Stop that! Stop that! Stop that! <laughs> that shit never gets old. <laughs> Oh, we got another February 5th rundown. <laughs> Mr. Hughes promo. We have a, on the tape trader show, we had a, 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 a bumper for ECW favorite matches. So uh, Paul's already, uh, you know, making a compilation tape of favorite matches of the shitty matches <laughs> from last year that we already reviewed. Oh, shit. What fucking matches are on that fucking show? Oh. Lord, I can Larry know. Winters, <laughs> Tommy Cairo, <laughs> Max Thrasher. Oh man, I've got all big, big Max and shit. <laughs> the Canadian Wolfman. Oh, don't forget about Glenn Osborne. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Cosmic Commander. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> we got to move it on. <laughs> we got Joy with a Shane Douglas lead in. Another Shane uh, and Putz match. Mm -hmm. Usual stuff from these two. Sherry distracts. Shane with a chain for a third fucking time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a Putz. Shane holds the chain back. Sherry grabs the chain. And for Rep those who don't... Oh, oh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say for those who don't know, Putz is Tommy Dreamer. Right. Referee John Finnegan questions Shane's hands. He's like, hey. <laughs> 
What happened there? You know? Why is that guy just laid out like that? You know what I'm saying? You got a chain? You know? <laughs> Shane's over there like, no, I ain't got no chain. You know what I'm saying? Shane's over there, no. The fans are all like, no, he has a chain. He has a chain. He has a chain. <laughs> They're not having none of his shenanigans. Shane ends up showing his hands. He's got nothing. He's over there Houdini and shit. <laughs> Fans go crazy. Of course. He didn't have a chain. One star. It was what it was. Your thoughts of the match? Oh, man. Oh, I thought that ending part was hilarious. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, week by week, you can see Shane just getting a little bit better. A little bit better. And it's all... Because of Tommy Dreamer, honestly. Oh, really? I mean, think about it. Like, I mean, again, you got the storyline guy of Tommy Dreamer, plucky underdog baby face. Mm -hmm. He's taking these L's through nefarious means, but he lives to fight another day. Meanwhile, you know, we got Shane Douglas submitting himself as a top guy week after week. And it's just, it, it, it just, it just, it's a good, it's, it's a nice thing to see the growing and the maturation of the character. Okay, okay, I smell what you're cooking. We got Joey back in the nest. He has Shane on the uh, on on the phone from his personal gym, and he's cutting a little promo. Did you get this on the on the show? Um, cuts a promo. Who's cutting the promo? Shane. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, they played a a highlight video. I don't. All right. So all right. So Shane cuts a promo. Shane, he cuts a a, a money ish promo on Sabu and Funk for the three-way at February 5th. The words and delivery are there, but he doesn't have the credibility yet. Um, it's growing, like I like I uh, previously mentioned, mm -hmm. but this match on February 5th is going to give him the credibility as a main event top guy. So it leads into a Shane package, which is what you saw. Mm -hmm. and he's okay. beating up people, and he's set in the, in, the, in, the, in the vignette set to some generic rock and roll. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So we got Chad Austin versus Johnny Hot Body. Right. It's taped earlier. Maddie gets on for a second to do color. Hot Body still with the do rag. His tights are completely awful. <laughs> this match is awful. Austin botches selling a German suplex and then botches a spin kick. And then hot body outside. Then he recoups for a sloppy fit, flip dive off the top to hot body on the floor. They do a replay of the spot. And then they cut to Joey and Matt, who's ordering the pizza under Styles' name. <laughs> like they said, all right, this match is the shit. We're just going to go to something else. I wanted to know who won, though, damn it. Who I... gives a shit? <laughs> You are the only person who gives a shit. For the 56 subscribers that we have so far. <laughs> Shout out to all y'all. They don't even give a shit. <laughs> so why do you give a shit? I don't, let's sh why show it then? Why even put it on then if I shouldn't give a shit? That's why I give a shit. Because if you put it on, you're telling me I should give a shit. And then when you don't give me a reason to give a shit, I feel robbed. I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> Joey wants to know what Maddie in the house has done all week, and they go to some pre tape promos. JT Smith speaks on the three way. He's never fought Sabu. He's fought Shane. And at first, he doesn't want to speak on Funk, but then he changes his mind and he says, they still have unfinished business. That's right. I like the sound of that. I said, way to make it about yourself, prick. Hey, fuck it. Is Peace the one who has to take out Terry Funk? Then shoot, whoever gets the job done. He ends the promo by saying, Funk's going to take the three-way. That's what he said. Then they go to Jason. Jason says, on February 5th, the most exciting thing will be my suit. <laughs> but as for the match, I'm going to go with Sabu. I can get with that. Todd, they go to Todd, and he's outside the locker room, oh, or yeah. outside of, outside his commissioner's office mm -hmm. or whatever. And Maddie says, what's your pick? And he said he can't make a pick because he's the commissioner. <laughs> but if he wasn't, he he mumbles something, and he closes the door in Maddie, Maddie's face. <laughs> Good job, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> then they go to the Rock and Rebel in this god-awful... Uh, 
jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't feeling the Rebels jacket? Oh, that shit was awful. <laughs> it was blinging all over the place. He's, he, hey, he's a rebel that's rocking, you know what I'm saying? I get it. <laughs> oh, slight retraction, for, uh, slight retraction from the other from the other show. I had said something about some rest and relaxation during a Jason promo, but it, I meant to say that it was rock and roll, and it segued into rock and rebel. Anyway, moving on. So speaking of rock and rebel, he's talking about he has a dog collar match at the th- uh, at February fifth. So he doesn't he, he he can't be really concerned about about the match. Honestly, he's focused. Right. But since y'all think he's so important, <laughs> he's going to go with the franchise, Shane Douglas. That also an excellent pick. Very smart of you there, Mr. Rebel. Hot Stuff Hollywood. What's that? We're going to go with you for the three-way at February 5th. Who's your pick? My pick is uh, I'm going to go with the franchise, Shane Douglas, because... Um, I think uh, he's the most suited temperamentally wise. Like he's he's more temperamentally sound than Sabu, and then he's better in every single way than Terry Funk. So I think he would go into the night the line is crossed with a superior strategy to both men, and will leave out of there the ECW heavyweight champion. Stay tuned. So we have Kevin Sullivan asking Taz, the Taz Maniac for his pick. The Taz just grunts. He goes, Ugh. And then Sullivan goes, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Sandman breaks down some character motivation and continuity. Sabu jumps Sandman to get at Shane for the ECW title back at uh, Ultra Clash. Shane then goofed Sandman at Ultra Clash for the title. And then Funk turned heel on Sandman with a chair, because it's the hardest time, it's the hardest chair shot he's ever had uh, since he's been in the in professional wrestling. That was per- so what? That was his first chair shot in professional wrestling. So with all that being said, he's gonna go with the experience of Terry Funk. Jason interrupts and counter promos for the double dog collar match. They go to grab at each other. JT Smith comes out of nowhere okay. to help him pull uh pull Sandman back. Okay. But your thoughts on uh Sandman uh giving a nod to Funk? I think there's a reason why he gets booed at the ECW arena, and now we know why. Because uh, apparently he's gotten his ass whooped by Rock and Rebel one too many times, and he's delirious. For him to sit up there with a straight face and say he thinks the experience of old ass Terry Funk, yeah, he got experience, but he's old as fuck. So why? <clears throat> I think that that was a terrible pick, and he's gonna look stupid come February fifth, nineteen ninety four, and. I really hope anybody, for real, for real, anybody but Terry Funk wins. I, if the referee wins the championship, that is okay with me. There's anybody but Terry Funk who's a despicable person. I, I, I wonder if his parents are ashamed of him. I would imagine so because um, his daddy died on him on purpose. Um, so, anyway... Um, yeah, my thoughts on that. I think I've said enough about that. And um, screw um, Sandman and uh, what was his father's name? Dory Senior. Um, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to you, Mr. Uh, Funk Senior. R.I.P. All that other good stuff. And, you know, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you and your wife. My condolences. <clears throat> Maddie in the house finally scares Paul Lee to come out of the dressing room. <laughs> Paul scoffs at Maddie's question. We wrap up with Joey's fence straddling ass because he doesn't know who's going to win the three-way on February 5th. Ty Gordon takes a shot at the Royal Rumble 1994 and he shields February 5th. Moving on. <laughs> we have a Jason promo from his car. He's highlighting his stable, Mr. Hughes, the pit bull, and now he turns his attention to Sal Belomo. We have a replay of Sal, I mean of, of Sandman and Jason on the car. 
and they recast that angle, and then we finally segue into the double dog color match. We have a two girls replay for the Holiday Hill shirt and more ECW gear. Hmm. Where, where are the shirts? <laughs> <laughs> we have a public enema vignette lead into the Shira and Chad Austin match. Complete squidash. Rock, rock will finish with a, uh, with a lion salt. Dud. Yeah. Moving on. We have a replay of the now instant classic public enemy segment. Still funny and awesome. No free f- freeze frame to end the promo this time. When they're uh, they're they're fighting the, the Bruce Brothers. They're going to fight the Bruce Brothers at uh, the Night of the Lions Cross. Sabu's Handler versus Gilbert. Also known as uh, Super Shredder Jake the Snake Roberts. <clears throat> Choke slam for the win. <laughs> Gives him another choke slam. <laughs> for good measure. For goof measure. <laughs> Paulie with the classic 911 dialing on the cell phone. He still has his jacket on and his fanny pack. <laughs> Three more choke slams and more Paulie theatrics. <laughs> we have a final February 5th card rundown. Paul with another money promo for February February 5th. I said this is the fourth money promo from Paul in a row. Overall, as a go-home show, thumbs up. Oh, my good. Wow. As a show, it sucked ass. <laughs> thumbs in the middle. <laughs> oh, man. This coming from the guy who d- didn't like Batman vs. Superman, everybody. Speaking of which, Justice League is coming out November 17th. Um, by the time this drops, it'll already be out, so make sure you go see it again. Um, you gave this show a thumbs in the middle. This was t- terrible. This show was garbage. How do you have a match on your show that there's no conclusion to? You don't even tell people, like, oh, shoot, during the break... Um, but, but both men got a concussion and the, the, the referee stopped the match or a dragon came and burned everybody up and shit. Tell me something. Tell me something. It was Johnny Hotbody versus Chad Austin. So why have it on the show in the first place? Because you have to fill time. So, what, they match went over their time limit and they said, fuck, they finished? Who gives a shit about the match? <laughs> I give a shit about the match. Why it's do you a, give a shit about the Chad Austin versus Johnny Hotbody? Because it's the principle. Dag damn it. There, if there was one Chad Austin fan watching the show... Um, Mama after, Chad Austin? <laughs> yes, she wants to know what happened to her baby boy. And I want to know what happened to her baby boy, too. What happened to Chad Austin and Gilbert after Gilbert hit that whatever kind of flip off the top rope you want to call it? He went into television oblivion. Who cares? <laughs> you keep saying that, and I keep saying I do. I'm waving my hand because I care. Next week, the night the line was crossed. I'm going to go over there. We're going to see the famous three-way between Terry Funk, Sabu, and the franchise Shane Douglas. And we're going to see if it lives up to the hype. Oh, we definitely will. Because I'm going to tell it like it is. That's what I do. Because I am a paragon of professionalism, not just a pony poom pulverizer. <laughs> Pintuple P. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the scourge of the IWC. <laughs> oh, shit. Life is a work. Make sure you get paid for it. We out. Peace. Peace.